Earlier today in synagogue, we read the following words spoken by the prophet Isaiah on Yom Kippur 2,600 years ago. Cry out, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet, declare to my people their rebellion and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of God. Wake up, Pennsylvania. Wake up and see the corruption. We are here on Yom Kippur, outside of Senate President Jake Corman's office. Senate President Corman is not here. He is playing golf in Westmoreland County at a golf course so exclusive that it costs $2,500 to see the senator today. Since we cannot afford to pay to play, we have come here to what is supposed to be the people's house. We have come here to pray that Senator Corman and our state legislature repent that they repent for the sins of corruption, that they turn away from special interests and big money donors, that they turn toward the people of Pennsylvania with service and love. We are here on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, to tell the truth. And the truth is, Senator Corman, you need to pass the gift ban. You need to make bribery illegal. Because right now, as long as bribery is legal, democracy cannot exist. As long as donors and party bosses and lobbyists can buy and sell lawmakers, then our government is not responsive to the needs of the people. It is responsive to the needs of the bribers. Senator Corman, pass the gift ban and stop taking bribes. Outside of this Capitol building, there stands a statue of a political boss, one of the most corrupt machine bosses in Pennsylvania history. Boise Penrose died over 100 years ago, and he was the defender of the robber barons and an enemy of women, black people, and all working people in Pennsylvania. One time while talking with his oligarch funders, Penrose explained the truth, how the game works. He said, you send us to Congress, we pass laws under which you make money. And out of your profits, you further contribute to our campaign funds to send us back again to pass more laws to make you more money. Our job is to break this system. We need to divorce our government from big money special interests and marry it to the people. We need to move quickly and thoroughly from oligarchy to democracy. We need to move from a government of, by, and for the people, I'm sorry, from a government of, by, and for the big money special interests to a government of, by, and for the people. Here is what a state legislature in bed with big money looks like. We spend more on horse racing subsidies than we do on public health. Over $200 million a year in Pennsylvania goes to the horse racing industry, with much of that money ending up in the pockets of rich, out-of-state racehorse owners. We allow over two-thirds of large corporations to stash their profits in a nearby tax haven, Delaware. This Delaware tax loophole costs over $1 billion a year and disadvantages small businesses that have to compete fairly. We tax poor people at over twice the rate that we tax rich people. The poorest 20% of Pennsylvanians pay 13.8% of their income in state and municipal taxes, while the richest 1% of Pennsylvanians pay only 6% of their income in state and local taxes. As of February 2021, there are 664 billionaires in the United States who share a combined wealth of $4.3 trillion. By comparison, the bottom half of all Americans only own $2.4 trillion. 
I'm going to say that again. The wealth of 165 million Americans is $2.4 trillion, while 664 people own $4.3 trillion. Since the pandemic started, the 17 billionaires in Pennsylvania have gained over $33 billion and have more than doubled their wealth from a year and a half ago. We are being systemically looted by a state legislature that follows orders from big money, that follows orders from special interests, in order to buy and sell politicians like stocks whose only value is how much money they can make for their cash constituents with no regard for their human constituents. The prophet Isaiah cried out, your rulers are rebels, partners with thieves. They chase after bribes. The widow and the orphan's cause does not come before them. Our public officials are rebels against the people. They turn their backs on us while they chase bribes. Senator Corman will not meet with us to talk about the gift ban. And right now, he is out chasing bribes at one of the fanciest places in the state. This is a violation of the core covenantal agreement, our Constitution. Our Constitution is our core civic covenantal document. It is the terms and conditions of the covenantal relationship between citizen and state, between people and government. Article 1, Section 2 of the Pennsylvania Constitution states, All power is inherent in the people, and all free governments are founded for their peace, I'm sorry, founded on their authority and instituted for their peace, safety, and happiness. But power is currently with big money special interests, not the people. This government is not free. It is captured by donors and party bosses. And this government is certainly not doing what is right by the people. It is not looking out for our peace, safety, and happiness. Our government follows the wrong golden rule. Instead of love your neighbor like you love yourself, we are governed by the guy with the gold makes the rules. The covenant has been broken. 2,600 years ago today on Yom Kippur, the prophet Isaiah stood in the temple and cried out against the ruling class and their sinful greed and commanded us to become repairers of the breach, to repair the broken covenant. We are here in Yom Kippur to stand in the breach and pray that Senate President Corman and the rest of this legislature turn away from idols of money and power and turn toward love and democracy. Turn away from the lobbyists and special interests and turn toward the people. Stop taking bribes. Start serving the public. And maybe God's face will turn to us and be merciful to us. We pray that you will work to build the trust necessary for our society to survive and thrive. There is much trust-building work to be done. And Reverend Tim Seitz Brown is now going to explain some of the reasons why we don't trust you and what you can do and what you need to do to earn our trust. Pass the gift ban. Stop taking bribes. It is a breach of trust that lobbyists can give legislators anything. Vacations, concert tickets, endless whining and dining, anything. These gifts or bribes and this bribery is written into the law. Lobbying in Pennsylvania is defined as providing any gift 
advancing the interests of the lobbyist or principal, giving a public official something in order to get something from them is corruption. Lobbyists report gifting about $1.5 million a year in bribes to our legislators. Senator Corman went on a free vacation to the Bahamas last year with a group of lawyers. And please do not tell us that more transparency is the answer. Us being able to see better the bad thing that you are doing does not make a bad thing magically into a good thing. We need you to stop doing the bad thing. How can we trust you when you are being legally bribed by lobbyists and special interests? 33 gift bans have been introduced since you came into office 20 years ago, and none of them has passed into law. Senator Corman, pass the gift ban and stop taking bribes. But unlimited gifts are only a piece of the problem. Frankly, they're the lowest hanging fruit on the money tree of politics. We do not trust you because there are no limits on campaign finance. By funding elections with big money, big donors control who gets to run for elections and who wins elections. To be a legislator in this building often costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. To be Senate president costs millions of dollars. To be governor costs tens of millions of dollars, and to be president of the United States costs billions. If the donors don't like you, they'll fund your opponent. And if they do like you, they'll fund you. So politicians end up working for the donors that allow them to run for office and not for the voters who are supposed to be in charge. Senator Corman, you take money from everyone, Comcast, the frackers, Wall Street, everyone. How can I trust you that you care about rural broadband when Comcast pays you not to care about it? How can I trust that you care about stopping pollution and climate change when the polluters are paying you big bucks not to care about it. How can I trust you to fight for the working people when one of your biggest campaign contributors, Glenn Hobbaker and company, is guilty of stealing massive amounts of wages from Pennsylvania workers. You raise money from rich people who pursue their own greed and oppress working people. And we do not also trust you as long as side jobs in addition to this job that you have are legal. This is a full-time, well-paid legislature. Yet a large number of our state legislators hold side jobs that have obvious conflicts of interest. Senator Corman, we pay you over $140,000 per year, plus a free state car, plus amazing benefits, plus per diems, so why are you on the board of directors of Old Dominion Bank? How can we trust you with our state budget and finances when you're also working for Wall Street? I ask Reverend Joan to continue.
do not trust you as long as the revolving door swings, as long as, as it is legal to swing back and forth between public service and private lobbying. How can we trust you when your office is filled with former lobbyists? Your chief of staff was a lobbyist for Maverick until you hired him a year ago. Does he work for Maverick or does he work for the people of Pennsylvania? Also, Maverick not only staffs your office, but they also run your campaigns and they also lobby you. So does Maverick work for Senator Corman or does Senator Corman work for Maverick? Not only does a lobbying firm staff your office, run your campaigns, and lobby on your behalf of special interests, but you also raise money for dark money groups associated with Maverick. It is no coincidence that last year at a rich Palm Springs golf course, Maverick organized a fundraiser for Senator Corman and a fundraiser for a dark money group which featured Corman on the same day in the same place. At that fundraiser, he raised at least $119,000, including $10,000 for a horse, race ty horse racing tycoon and $5,000 from each, each from a number of low wage bosses. Is it surprising that our minimum wage of $7.25 an hour while billionaires get richer and richer on the backs of workers? How can we trust this legislature when it is legal for lobbyists to, don to donate unlimited sums of money to campaigns and to dark money organizations, gift our legislators with unlimited gifts, bribe them with current and future jobs, and staff their offices, run their campaigns, and fundraise for them all while lobbying them. This is a deep culture of corruption that leads to suffering and wrath. There is a crisis of faith happening in our society. We don't trust our government and we do not trust each other. No society with such little trust can survive. Pew has been polling the question, do you trust your government to do the right thing all or most of the time for the last seven decades? And the all time high to this question was in 1964 when 78%, 78% of Americans trusted their government. That number has steadily declined for decades and now hovers between 15 and 20%. We have a political system incapable of taking on special interests who avoid taxes and loot the treasury by hiring lobbyists armed with unlimited gifts, unlimited campaign contributions, and unlimited dark money. This legislature preaches belt tightening and individual responsibility to the people while they are being legally wined and dined by the special interests who are doing the looting. Marie Antoinette could not write a worse script. A society that systematically neglects the people is unsustainable and nobody knows which straw will be the one that breaks the Republic's back. There is a crisis of faith occurring. We do not trust you. And we pray that this legislature gives the people of Pennsylvania a sign that you understand. Senator Corbin, pass the gift ban. Stop taking bribes. In the biblical worldview, our world has a moral compass and our history is intimately linked to our actions. Our collective crimes and injustices result in our pain and suffering. And our ancestors call this divine judgment and divine wrath. 
In the words of the Enlightenment philosopher Hegel, world history is world judgment. The Bible is a series of historical atrocities interpreted by our ancestors as divine judgment for our collective moral and ethical failures. Our ancestors' crimes usually included violence, corruption, materialist idolatry, war, and an atmosphere of mistrust and spite. Our weakened society too often turned against itself and collapsed from within or was unable to withstand deadly plagues and invaders. On this talus, on this prayer shawl, it says the words, Tzedek, Tzedek, Tir Dov, Justice, justice, you must pursue. The full verse from Deuteronomy is, Do not pervert justice or show partiality. Do not take a bribe, because a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the righteous. Justice, justice, you must pursue, so that you may live. Justice is a non-negotiable foundation of our society. Without it, we suffer wrath. With it, we live and thrive. Bribery subverts justice. It prevents justice by blinding and deafening our leaders to anybody who doesn't pay to play. As it says in Proverbs, through justice is a nation established, through bribery is it destroyed. Our current reality is that our political system is incapable of dealing with the multitude of crises facing Pennsylvanians, and this results in suffering and violence. Our current reality is inevitably crashing in on itself. As it says in the Talmud, whoever takes a bribe brings great wrath into the world. What is wrath? Wrath is the stress and suffering of poverty. Prior to the pandemic, 38% of Pennsylvanians were poor or low income, including one in two children. Wrath is the violence of poverty. Wrath is the misery and uncertainty of living without access to health care. Almost 700,000 Pennsylvanians are uninsured, and many more can't afford to use the health care they have. Wrath is being unable to afford water, like 22% of Pennsylvania homes that are currently struggling to afford their water bills. Wrath is when 482,000 children 18% of all children in Pennsylvania live in hungry households. Over 13,000 people in Pennsylvania are homeless. Over 48,000 people in Pennsylvania are in jail. Wrath is when our state's 47 ICE detention centers strike fear into the hearts of our 170,000 undocumented neighbors who are suspended in cruel legal purgatory. Wrath is the suffering we cause by the crimes that we commit. Of all this and more, we are guilty. Please forgive us. About 1700 years ago, the rabbis of the Talmud asked the question, does God pray? And they decided that God does pray. And this is the prayer that God prays. May it be my will that my mercy may prevail over my other qualities, so that I may deal with my children mercifully and stop short of wrath. Today on Yom Kippur, we read the book of Jonah, which stands out in the Bible as a story that doesn't end in wrath, but ends in mercy. It doesn't end in judgment. It ends in forgiveness. In Nineveh, where the collective violence and suffering were so great, there was no wrath, there was forgiveness, there was mercy, there was repentance. Jonah is a person who knows that he needs to go to Nineveh, the corrupt and violent capital city of the Big Bad Empire, and urge them to repent and change their behavior, or else history will judge and be wrathful. Jonah then does everything he can to avoid this responsibility. He runs away in the opposite direction to the city of Tarshish, and he hides. He just wants to disappear and forget it all. 
Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel wrote, Jonah is running to Tarshish when Nineveh is tottering on the brink. What is the use of running to Tarshish when the call is to go to Nineveh? And that is why we're here in Nineveh. But who here can't sympathize with Jonah? Who wants to go and speak truth to power? It is so much easier to run away and hide. A whale's stomach seems so much nicer and safer than coming to Nineveh and urging repentance so that in this moment in history, mercy might just overrule judgment. When Jonah arrived in Nineveh, he preached the truth, and the king of Nineveh repented and stopped the corruption and violence that was in his hands. The king fasted and prayed, and God moved from the throne of judgment to the throne of mercy. So we have come here to Nineveh to pray for mercy, and we pray that our Senate president and everyone else in this building humbles themselves, repents, and prays for mercy as well. There is hope. We can come back from idolatry. We can repent for our corruption and our violence. Yes. It is not too late. Yes. When the Israelites were in the, had left Egypt and were in the desert, the people turned toward idolatry and they built a golden calf to worship. Mm -hmm. After the nation turned to idolatry, God was so angry mm -hmm. that God said to Moses, and I'm paraphrasing here, I'm walking out on you and that idolatrous nation because if I stick around, I'll kill you all. Moses then has the audacity to reply to God's anger with an ultimatum and a demand. He first tells God, if you won't continue with us, then we won't continue at all. We do this together or not at all. Moses then demands a one-on-one -on -one encounter. God reluctantly agrees. And when Moses trekked up Mount Sinai the next morning for a sunrise confrontation with his angry God, God met Moses and said, Adonai, Adonai, al rachum v'chanum, erech hapayim, rav chesed ve'emet. God, God, God of mercy and compassion, abounding in love and truth. And God reaffirmed the covenant and agreed to not leave the people. Moses stood in the breach and responded to the great sin of the golden calf, by confronting the divine, and the response was mercy and compassion. The prophet Isaiah proclaimed 2,600 years ago on Yom Kippur, there is no rest for the wicked. Similarly, in our time, there is no rest for anyone who protects corruption and stands in the way of democracy. Senator Corman, Representative Grove, and everyone else who has the power to act to redeem this house of corruption, but refuses to do so, we will hound you. We will encounter you at every turn, at your hearings and at your fundraisers, at your free meals and at your free sports games, at your places of work and at your places of rest. In every encounter, we pray for mercy and democracy. And we will keep encountering you, because there is no rest for the wicked, there is no rest for the corrupt, and there is no rest for those who protect corruption. The prophet Amos, who lived through the violent collapse of a corrupt system, named the problem of his time. There are those who oppress the poor and take bribes and deprive the poor of justice in the halls of power. Amos then urges us to wail in the streets, mm -hmm. to cry out in the yes. public squares, yes. so that justice will roll like waters That's right. and righteousness like a mighty stream. Yes. We are going to keep wailing in the streets. We are going to keep crying out in the public square. We are going to keep praying that God will respond to our crimes of corruption with loving mercy and not with wrath and judgment. We are going to keep working as divorce lawyers to divorce special interests from government. And we are going to keep working as marriage counselors to join together we the people and a government that will one day be of 
by and for the people. We are going to continue to be repairers of the breach. Yes, we are. Gamar Khatimatova, may history seal us in the book of life. <laughs>